Hello again, Security Community. Welcome to another video tutorial to help you get started and make the best of service now. My name is Eric Ferron in Santa Clara, California, and my guest today is once again Luke Casper, Principal Security Consultant at ServiceNow. Good afternoon, Luke, and welcome back. Good afternoon, Eric. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. So this is now the sixth time we have you on the show. Last time you told us about notifications and how to use them, right? That's right. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that there was some good feedback about that episode. So today you're going to tell us about reports and dashboards. Why do we need to know more about these? Uh, we at ServiceNow are particularly interested in making sure that our users, our customers, quickly get the critical and actionable insights that help them make the right decisions to protect their businesses. When we're working alongside our customers, we find that most of the reports available are not always used in the most effective or efficient manner. So today, I want to help solve this and give our customers, our viewers here, the tips and tricks of the trade, if you will, to make the best of the tools available to them. All right, then. Let me get us started. Let me first take us through our usual refresher. Our tutorial series is primarily designed to help people get started with security applications and get value quickly. Today's episode fits squarely into the step to maturity level one. Following Luke's guidance will help you save time getting there. Also, the episode today fits in our overall onboarding program currently composed of three streams. One on the processes and change management, one on the deep dives to support your journey, and one on product features. With this said, I think, Luke, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Eric. What I'd like to do is start off with a little bit of a look at what we provide baseline. So we're going to hop over into our demo instance for the community here and show you a couple overview pages, home pages, dashboards, whatever you want to call them, that show a smattering of reports that we provide baseline when you turn on your application. Some of these reports that you're gonna see are included in our performance analytics packages. Talk to your friendly local sales rep to determine what you're entitled to from a licensing perspective. Uh, so Eric, if we could just refresh our screen here, if you click that ServiceNow icon in the upper left-hand corner, uh, for our customers and viewers, it'll likely be your organization's name there, but for the demo here, it says ServiceNow. Now you can see in the center here, we've already pulled up our Security Incident Explorer. This is all demo data, but it gives you a feel for what you might expect. This is a home page, and you can see that drop down that Eric just circled allows you to pop around to a couple different home pages that are available baseline in ServiceNow. A couple to call out there are the CISO overview, I'm sorry, CISO reporting overview, Security Incident Explorer, Security Incident Manager overview, and Security Analyst overview. There's a few others, but these are four of the bigger ones, and they're all targeted to different personas. And we can talk about that for uh, a minute later on. But obviously, the CISO one is for your CISO, the manager overview is for your managers, and your analyst overview is uh, for your analysts. So they all show a different kind of information in different manners to help those people at those levels have actionable, useful intelligence about what's going on in their organization and how their daily work might change or be impacted by information in the system. So for this Explorer, you can see that we've got security incident counts by category, we've got heat maps set up, we've got closures by priority, and overall count. It really just gives you a vision across security incident uh, as it exists in your environment. And don't an attribution map right? That's, that's not an attack map. It's just a map of where your security incidents have originated from on the security incident itself. Now, dashboards, home pages, overviews are all made up of reports. Each of these individual boxes are individual reports in the system uh, today that you can view independently. So Eric, if we could, we can pop over and take a look at a couple different reports to see uh, how we might compose a dashboard. Great, so in the upper left-hand corner in your filter navigator, you can just type in reports and that'll take you to the reporting. Now, if you click view run, you'll get a view of all of the reports in the instance that you have access to. First off, it starts you with my reports at the top there. It's a pre-filtered selection that shows you the reports that you've made. Now, if you click on all, you're gonna be able to see all the report, 
reports that are out there in your instance. And if you search for just security incident over there, you'll see that we have a significant amount of reports that come baseline in order to assist you as you build out your reporting and build out your dashboards as you want. This is just a quick search on security incidents. And if you scroll all the way down, you can see that we've got 22 different reports that have security incidents as the text in the title. Uh, there's even more when you get away from that specific of a name. Let's say you've done all of that research. You've looked at everything and what you really need just doesn't seem to fit with what's out there today. You want to make a report. You want to make a dashboard. Great. Uh, I highly encourage you to do it, but let's take a breath and approach it with a methodology that allows you to create quality reports to meet your strategic needs. Right? We want to make sure that we map a report specifically to the needs of your organization. And we're gonna do that with a methodology we call goal, question, metric. And the metrics are fulfilled with our reports. So we're gonna start at the very top with our goals. What you wanna do is define your groups or organization's goals. And what we mean by that is say, you're the security operations team manager, you want to reduce the amount of time that your team is spending on security incidents of low priority. So that might be one of your organization or group's goals. In order to know that you're accomplishing your goals, you need to ask certain questions. So for each goal, you're gonna define at least one, it could be more, question you need to be able to answer in order to determine your progress towards your goal. And then for every question, there's going to be some form of a metric, an answer, a way to answer that question with numbers, with a chart, with uh, you know, quantitative or qualitative data that will help you understand whether you're meeting those goals. And we can see in the chart on the right, you can have more than one question per goal and you can have more than one metric per question. So once you've gone through this exercise, you're gonna be able to go ahead and look at those metrics and they're going to direct you to the reports that you need to create in order to know whether you're accomplishing your group or your organization's goals. Now we just threw a lot of stuff at you here from a methodology perspective. So we'll walk through two really basic examples. For security incident response, we wanna reduce the amount of time it takes to resolve our security incidents. Some of the questions we might ask are, how long do our analysts take to get assigned a security incident? And how long do security incidents take to go from assigned to closure? There are different metrics that, we, there's a ton of different metrics actually that we can use to answer those questions, but two that are very common that I run to, into in the field often are mean time to analysis and mean time to closure. So by being able to get quality or quantitative data for mean time to analysis and mean time to closure, that means I can know, I can track how well I'm doing towards my organizational goal of reducing the amount of time it takes to resolve security incidents. And that report is showing productivity and it's showing usefulness to my security operations team directly. So at the bottom, we've named three different reports that you might put together uh, to show you what those metric like on a dashboard or in a particular report. Let's take a look at a vulnerability response example next. So our goals here are to remediate critical vulnerable items within a time frame dictated by our corporate policy, say it's three days. What we need to know in order to be able to know whether we're accomplishing this goal, we have to answer these questions. How many items are out there that are currently assigned for remediation within the policy? And how many are out there that are currently assigned without being in the policy? And how many do we have that are not assigned at all? Right, so this will be a real-time picture of how we stand and compare to what our policy is telling us we should be doing. One of the metrics that we would be able to put together is defining an SLA of critical vulnerable items closed within five days. And so from that SLA in the platform, we'd be able to build reports on where our SLAs have been breached, where they're about to breach, and list of unassigned critical vulnerable items showing CI ownership information if perhaps that's how remediation is handled. So again, maybe not the perfect scenario, but I, hopefully it conveys to you 
the goal question metric concept that we're looking to follow so that when we get to actually building our reports, we know that they're meaningful because they provide data against a metric that answers a question that tells us if we're accomplishing our goals. So now that we've gone through two examples, what are some do's and don'ts? And you kind of mentioned a couple of them here today. First off, we want you to stop, think critically and plan strategically. You want to make sure that your reports are actionable. It's not just a pretty color or a pretty picture. It actually gives you something to do. And you want to provide the so what. Why are you doing this, right? And that's what part of the goal question metric helps you define before you go creating it. And then experiment a little bit, right? Within this framework, there is tons of room for experimentation to figure out what reports and what reporting format and what order uh, all of these things need to be in and to, to most effectively tell you if you're accomplishing your goals. A couple things to not do. Don't just do what everybody else is doing because you heard it. Your organizational goals may be entirely different from another organization. And so you need to make sure that your reports align to those goals. Don't stop at un unqualified or unexpected reports. Make sure that uh, people reviewing your reports are expecting them. They know what they're for. They're labeled clearly. And then people understand what this data is trying to tell them. And do not, finally, do not be afraid to change things as your business changes and matures over time. The reports that help you do better work at maturity level one will not be nearly as useful at maturity level three. Right now, go out and take a look at the reports you're using and make sure they line up against your organizational goals. Just because you've been doing it doesn't mean you should continue doing it. One of the ways to do that analysis is to do your GCM on a whiteboard. Go and just throw, forget about everything else. Write your goals at the top of the board. Number them. Then write your questions. Number those. Map them to a, a goal and do your metrics. And then finally, we have a ton of training out there online uh, on dashboards and reports. If you're not sure how to represent a report you think you need in ServiceNow, take a look at the training and hopefully we'll be able to help you out with that. Right. And we have the links in the slides, of course. So again, Luke, thank you very much for reminding us to use our brains and think critically and not leave it all to the machine. Uh, that's, a, that's a very, very useful advice. I think that the methodological tools uh, that you just shared with us uh, should be very helpful there. So thank you, Luke, for your time. Thank you all for listening. Just uh, a few quick reminders before we close. The slides, of course, are available in PDF format in the forum. If you have questions, for Luke and other ServiceNow specialists, don't hesitate to ask them in the Security Operations Forum. And in order to stay tuned for the upcoming episodes of our Get Started series, make sure you subscribe to the forum. Until next time, on behalf of everyone at ServiceNow, goodbye.